It's time to finally talk some Hellraiser, this series with that horror icon played by Doug Bradley, Lead Cenobite! They might have started calling him Pinhead after the first one. <laughs> like the first two Hellraiser movies. They have an amazing tone, a great mythology, and interesting characters. You had some fantastic acting, and there was a lot of focus put on the characters so that you could understand where they were coming from, even the rotten ones, and it had some stunning practical effects work like when Frank is being resurrected. One particularly nice thing about them was they were built around actually being disturbing rather than cheap jumps. But of course, Hellworld was too good to follow that example. My favorite is Hellraiser 2, though, and it's the only one in my view that feels like a true sequel to the first. There are a few continuity gaps between 1 and 2, but it actually continued the story with the same main protagonist, Kirsty. They also hell raised the stakes by, well, going to hell. And you get to see some pretty bizarre and surreal imagery in the hell scenes, which I find incredibly intriguing and is what makes this one my favorite. I also really liked how Pinhead was presented in the first two over the rest. He was a scary son of a bitch who tortured the shit out of you, but not without reason. Like inviting him by opening the puzzle box. A Pinhead moment I really liked in the second movie is when the evil shithead Dr. Chenard got one of his metal patients who was really good at puzzles to open the puzzle box for him, Pinhead immediately said, Oh no you don't. She's not the one who actually called us and ignored her. After the second one though, Pinhead kinda said, Ah fuck it, I'll do whatever now, as long as there's puzzles involved. He really loves puzzles. So then Pinhead did stuff like make stupid half-ass Cenobites such as CD Face. And then who could forget the giant puzzle box in space from everyone's favorite Alan Smithy film, Hellraiser 4. There's also kind of a weird thing about any Hellraiser movie after 4. None of them started life as a Hellraiser movie. They all just kind of got adapted into one along the way. Except that stupid remakey thing, but who gives a fuck about that? Just get the fuck out of here! No. So with some of these, you're kind of like, wait, what am I watching? Then Pinhead cameos to say, Hellraiser, I love puzzles. So like the other Hellraiser sequels, Inferno, Hellseeker, and Deader, Hellworld also didn't start as a Hellraiser movie. And I had such high hopes for this movie beforehand. I also feel like the stupid poster is a bit misleading with the whole evil goes online thing. There is a little bit of an internet thing in this film, but we unfortunately don't get anything like Pinhead sitting at a computer and terrorizing chat rooms. Hellworld also stars Lance Henriksen, who had the opportunity to play Frank in the original Hellraiser, but instead opted to appear in the vastly superior 8th movie. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've heard. <laughs> but I mean, who could turn down the role of... host? Henry Cavill is also in this, so hey, maybe Pinhead v Superman might turn out a bit better than when he v'd Batman. What's his problem? Anyway, the super friends are gathered here because one of their not-so-super buddies died while playing the MMO Hellworld, and if you die in the game, you die for real. Can't wait to find out that Pinhead was really Elizabeth Bathory the whole time. Chelsea here realizes they made a huge mistake by this not being an open casket funeral, so she figures she'll go ahead and fix that. And as she does so, we get a shot of this statue to let you know that the movie is trying so hard to be meaningful without actually having meaning. 
Maybe that's why it was a closed casket. <laughs> Two years later? From her dream? Or did that corpse actually get a little frisky? Oh well, the stupid jump scare was worth not making sense. Who's that at the door? It's a bird! It's a Cenobite! No, it's Superman! Well, at least that chatter mask actually hides who he is. We then get a look at the Hell World game, and wow, this is the piece of shit that hooked their friend to such an obsession he killed himself? This shitty browser Java or Flash game? You know it's good when they can't even be bothered to make the game that the movie is named after even look semi-decent. Well, upon solving the <laughs> virtual puzzle box, the Super Friends all get invites to a real-life Hell World party. It's almost like they're desperate to try and get people to still play Hell World because they might find more complex games out there like Pong. But uh-oh, no guess! Guess Derek here is SOL! Move aside, I can get my own invite. Hell yeah! Oh, never mind. It took him a good eight seconds to get his own invite after sitting down to play. Tough game, that Hell World. Can't wait for their super crowded party. And doesn't this just make too much sense for a prize in an online game? A real life party at a specific location? Every player around the world can make that! Luckily, of course, though, it's within driving distance for the Super Friends. 100% mayhem, 0% guilt. Shut up! By the way, the actor who played Derek also voiced a few characters in DC cartoons, so yeah, we really are full up on the Super Friends here. As this is a very exclusive web browser gamer party with no guests allowed, of course people can just stroll right in with no one checking anything. But look at how Hellraiser this is! An oversized spinning puzzle box! That's pretty silly, but when we've already seen one in space, it's kind of hard to top that. I'm dead and gone to hell! I know the feeling. Hi, Jay! I haven't seen him since the funeral. She blames us for Adam's death. He blames them because they played the game with him, I guess. Unlike Jake, who clearly never plays Hellworld, hence why he's here. So what have you been up to, Jake? I'm trying to forget the past. Then you shouldn't go to a party hosted by the game your friend killed himself over, fuck nut! Welcome, Hellraiser. The two of the Invitations. Those must be legit because they're the exact same printout and have no form of identification to them. I'm your host for the festivities tonight. Just call me host. I specifically invited you lot in here with me because you're the main characters. They then play around with stuff in Hostrixen's office, which he just stands there awkwardly for, and we're left to wonder why anything is happening. Soups finds a tarot deck, and guess which card comes up? Gasp. What were the odds? At least Pinhead's on it. That's real fucking cute. However, that's not the real shocker. What really bothers the man of idiocy is they are printed with super cheap ink. I wear eau de Cenobite. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when these movies were good? May I offer you a drink? A little ritual for newcomers only. You've memorized every fucking person who comes to these online game parties' faces, have you? Oh, sweet, he's taking them down to the ugly 2000s horror blue lighting section of the house. Where he shows that this house actually has a bunch of old and dangerous stuff in it, so really, it's the perfect location for a bunch of drunk idiots. Look, this isn't a reunion. I never was one of you guys, and I never will be. You know what Jake's real problem is? 
He's more of a Marvel guy. Hostrickson gets mad that Chelsea isn't impressed with his baby jar basement and pokes her with a little drug needle, prompting Pinhead to finally show up with a very important message. Adam was right. Oh, by important, I of course mean not. Not at all. Anyway, guess that never happened and she's just crazy, lol. Everybody gets a mask and a cell phone. Each mask has a four-digit number on it. You wish to engage in the pleasures that only flesh can bring. Dial that number. Christ's sake. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, did you really think this story wasn't stupid enough yet, Hellworld? You had to dump in cell phone mask, Fox? As ridiculous as just take a phone and dial a mask number is, it at least finally gave Hostrickson a use for all those shitty Nokias he had laying around. But seriously guys, this isn't just for stupid ass setups later in the movie. Calling someone's mask number who's five feet in front of you is totally needed for people to have random drunken sex. Not a day in the life of you guys. Has nothing ever changed? I'm above it. But I'm doing it. It's almost like I'm a poorly written asshat. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? That joke is timeless. These things actually work. Thanks, Derek. What the? And of course, the caller ID actually displays her real name because fuck off, this movie doesn't think. Yeah, right. As if. Oh no, you didn't. Don't go there, girlfriend. Anything else? You know, the unbelievable thing isn't that she's going in here, it's that she's apparently the first person in a house full of drunken idiots to do so. If only Hostrickson knew what locks were. And of course, wandering around an empty room by yourself is one of the greatest party activities, so how can she resist this? So, Allison sits in a spinny blade kill you chair when Hostrickson reveals he has slasher killer teleport powers and she dies. This is Hellraiser, is it? Oh wait, of course it is! Just look at how Hellraiser this is! Pinhead's now in the room! Pinhost then lures Jake into a room with a computer on a string, then reveals his awesome sitting in a chair without you noticing power, and gives him a puzzle box that good old dead friend Adam supposedly made. But really, it's just a prank box that makes wondrously fake nails stab through your fingers. Fingers. Oh, yeah, then he turns into Pinhead, so, uh, chains with hooks coming from the walls to pull you apart is out. Little nails popping out to give you boo-boos is in. Things have truly escalated. I'd love to see your puzzle box. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I love that the movie can't even pretend that this phone mask thing has a real point with people lifting them up and calling when they're right in front of each other. What the fuck am I watching? Oh, excuse me, I thought this was Hellraiser, not some stupid teen sex comedy. <laughs> Derek drops his inhaler, which is only a thing to be a flimsy excuse to get him down to the basement for this little moment of stupidity. <laughs> Pinhead! Jason Voorhees, they're pretty much the same character, right? There is an explanation for Pinhead's little cleaver adventure here, but ugh, that's its own brand of stupid. Also, why are these idiots always calling each other now on the cheap Nokia pieces of crap? Did none of them actually have a real cell phone in the first place? I need help. I'm at 86 Hillbound Drive. You'd think the mask fuck cell phones would just not be able to dial out or something, but that'd make too much sense. Nah, they're just magic and don't let 911 hear you. 
But then the police actually do show up, but can't see Chelsea in the window, so they figure she's on drugs, lol, bye. It's finally time for the death of Superman. But he's not even going to get the V pinhead after all, because the other Cenobites were kind of getting bored and want something to do, so his kill goes to everyone's favorite Cenobite. Uh... uh other one? Seriously, other one is in on this? Of all the Cenobites I had to get teamed up with, it's other one! Come on! Like a bad horror movie, isn't it? Well, he said it. You know, acknowledging that you're a piece of shit doesn't change that fact, Hellworld. Oh, what wonders we have to show you. The new Hellworld expansion pack turns the Hellworld game into a real game. Only $29.95. But if you solve my puzzle box, you'll get a coupon for $5 off. Then Chatter 2.0 shows up with some Ceno friends. No! Not off branded Lacely slapped together Ceno bites again! I'm having CD face flashbacks! I'll say it this much. It is about a box. <laughs> Hell World will be right back after these messages. I hate other one. We now return to Hell World. Mm, what you say? Mm, that you old. I didn't know. I'm sorry. I just killed you. Huh? You just died in my arms. I'm just dying in your arms tonight. Must have been who gives a shit. Could this place be a portal? to the real hell world. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> we knew what hell world was doing to Adam, but we kept on playing it. All those updates to Flash Player just so he could continue playing drove him insane. Where are you? <sighs> I locked myself in the attic. You don't even want to know why. Could you even remotely act like you've just seen your dead friends and are currently in a life and death situation? But then Chelsea finds out Hostrixen was dead Adam's dad, explaining everything. Except, of course, for everything that that certainly doesn't explain. How did Adam's father get control of the stupid online game Hellworld just to create this elaborate ruse so he could lure his dead son's friends to this hell world party for revenge why does he exclusively blame the super friends and oh i don't know anyone actually associated with the game which he would have had to met during his super takeover of it Unless you want to say he just hacked the game and sent out all these invitations to a party and no one associated ever noticed. Also, how would Hostrixen even know they were still playing this thing and would even get to the puzzle box level to get the invites? How many years has he been hosting this party just to get them? He's mentioned this is not his first. But, oh, wait, that's not the only nonsense reveal. What is it? It's us. No! You and your friends have been six feet under since this party began. Yes, almost the entire movie is just a magic drug hallucination somehow controlled mostly by Hostrixen through cell phones in their graves. Which is dumb enough to imagine how that worked for the horror elements, but even more asinine for the party crap. So Hostrixen did stuff like tell the Man of Steel hooks in the back that he was getting a blowjob, but then the mask makes a scary face at him? 
He says their imagination filled in some of the blanks, but how the hell would he know what they were doing then in order to guide their extremely controlled drug trip when he wanted to? And how were these idiots actually sharing the same experience when they're all just in separate graves tripping balls? And yes, this means that Pinhead hasn't actually been in this movie at all, as it's just been Hostrixen. And that also means he was pretending to be Pinhead in those scenes where he was talking to himself and no other characters were around. He also included a scene where he had to explain his party to the police despite none of the druggies being around to hear it. They also show when exactly he drugged everyone, which only adds more holes because when he stabbed Chelsea with the pin was apparently when he got her, yet half of the super friends were already drugged up at that point. So they should have already been out, and if they hadn't fallen yet, they would have seen him stab her in front of all of them. And at the very least, Jake would have seen it because he wasn't drugged until the CG nailed. Luckily, this drug apparently knows it should have absolutely no effect on someone until everyone's gotten to have some. But other than that, it makes perfect sense. I barely had enough energy to go back and enjoy myself at the party. I figured, why not? Why not enjoy myself? Christ's sake. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> so only Chelsea and Jake survive, cause if you die in the dream drug game, you die for real too. Oh, then no shit they apply that Adam's ghost called the police to save Chelsea and Jake. You were a little slow on this saving your friends thing, you stupid ghost. But oh well, two out of five, that's certainly... almost half. Why didn't Freddy Hostrixen have them die in the drug dream before he left? No reason given! We need to move on to the last piece of nonsense with Hostrixen having the real puzzle box! Somehow! Welcome. At least this is my hell. I thought it was only fake that I was stuck hanging out with other one. But look, here he is. Other one's annoyance factor is legendary, even in hell. I would rather have even taken Butterball, the only Cenobite defeated by a roof falling on him, than other one. This is just so embarrassing. Oh, look, he brought a blade. How cute. Do you even puzzle, other one? Look, if you forget that I ever showed up here with other one and ignore how fake your chopped up body looks, I'll let you haunt the main two morons for no good reason. And then, uh, yeah, that's exactly what happens. He shows up to annoy them off the road. Why can he do that? Who cares? It's the end of this stupid damn horror cliche movie with mostly fake Pinhead the whole time and so much damn runtime wasted by partying idiots and walking scenes. Overall, not enough internet ghosts, zero out of ten. Such sights to show. Other one, 
Get the hell out of here! You are ruining this whole operation! No.